so you might as well start asking questions. I hope you get like the dark, like um, the guys. That's um, the 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 You have to um, 
assume that, just think what happened if we never used spatial representation of wave functions but momentum. Um, but it's all, you know, just like in real, so in real space. function in X, 
using the problem set sometimes in parts of lessons. And this was the lesson I wanted to get across. Maybe not the best job, but anyway, so there it is. All right, what, what else you got? Like I say, I got a, I got places to be. spit out 25% up and 75% down. Yeah, I mean, you, you, there's unlimited possibilities. So anyway, I made up an operator, and then I have you determine whether there's an uncertainty relationship with another operator. And you either can do it or not. And again, it, it, that depends on can you do this basic direct notation with spin. And, and I know that because that really should be pretty easy. And actually, I have you do it with uh, mostly with matrices right now. Because um, that, that's kind of a pain not to. Okay, so one thing I discovered that uh, it was kind of kind of interesting. I didn't I didn't realize this. Um, so we know that okay. So of course. Um, Um, here's the variance. Here's the variance of these two operators. Uh, right that equal to. God, this is. I keep, I keep forgetting how many squiggles and dashes and greater than and less than and bars I have to write. Uh, anyway, so this is just the uncertainty principle, which you, we actually proved in class. Um, and so I, I never really do worry about a square or that one four or whatever. I can Google it. Um, so really, you want to know what your operators are, and you want to know whether there's a commutator, whether the commutator is zero or not. And that's what it comes down to. Now, here's the thing. I didn't mention this in class because, I mean, if you want, oh, damn it. I just figured it out, really. So uh, if you do x and p, you got it. So you had that on the homework. Just well, no, 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 the last one. The one you turned in, the one I'm still grading. It's got it's a nightmare to grade that one. Um, you get a constant, but you know I had always been. Um, there's many, many times where you actually get an operator as your commutator. And you know, I in all honesty, I never really knew what to make of that. I mean, it's like zero, I mean, to a very low level to, to, to my undergrads, and thank God I got this right, I'm like, it's either zero or nine. 
right zero, there's no uncertainty principle. Not zero, it's, there's an uncertainty principle. So the variance in this goes up and the variance of that goes down and vice versa. So they have to be correlated. And that's actually what's happening here with uh, our space, our space and momentum. They're anti-correlated. Then, you know, why, then, then why? So you're seeing that. You're, that's, that's coming out right here. Uh, actually, more like right here, or both. Okay, now when it comes to an operator, when the operator is the output, I was actually really thrown off by that. I mean, other than it's not zero. So, you know, I was just like, all right, it's not zero, so there's a, there's a, um, there's an uncertainty relationship between, you know, it's like M with the X, Y, and Z, right? So there's an uncertainty relationship between X and Y. Here's what I just figured out. What this is really telling you is the uncertainty principle is conditional, right? Now, now the, the, the way to understand this, I mean, so that, that's again, that's like, remember how I keep saying, a paper says we observed a phenomenon, right? It's all sensible, but it's also meaningless. So what I just said probably was somewhat meaningless, right? Okay, let's make it have meaning. Now, to make something have meaning in quantum, uh, you have to have an inner product. Nothing has meaning until, until you've done an inner product. Now we've got, uh, this is the result of a measurement. The operators are our instrumentation, but we have to, we have to do this deal I feel like I'm in a gang. Um, we have to do this to know what the result of the measurement is. And of course, what, um, here I'll be very specific, we also have to, you know, we have to make some decision what we measure. If you don't know what you're measuring, then <laughs> you're an idiot. So um, you're out of control, right? So, so we have to do this. Okay, now let's, let's um, now, so let's now let's apply this to the. Um, uh, uh, so sorry. Let me let me make this very specific. Let's make that x and y. And I'm doing that so that uh, it's not so abstract. Uh, I h. Okay. So then. So now you're doing this, right? And and then later you can square it and whatnot. That's why that i will go away. Just end up with h bar squared, h bar squared over four. Uh, oh, but anyway, but but what's this? Yeah, I mean the SC operator on the plus state is just what? Uh, well, it's technically the h bar over two, but anyway, yeah. So it's just not zero. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just not zero. Okay, but what if you were to do, um, okay, let's say that you were measuring SX, SX plus, right? Hey, you know, I'm doing, you know, up, down, SX plus would be like that, SX minus would be like that, so that, uh, so what's the, um, yeah, well, hold on, hold on, let's, 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 let's even draw this, right? So if I say the spin is, um, you know, I, I, I really, unfortunately, I have to draw this correctly, right? So, okay, so, so here's the S, uh, and here's the plus state, right? So it's technically canted into the xy plane, but the projection on the z-axis is h bar over two. Okay, so I'm just saying, you know, just to calibrate you. I, I know you want me to just like draw it straight along the axis, but, but that's not right. Okay, now let's think about um, let's think about the sz plus state. So I'll say that's that's y. That it's, I kind of screwed it up right here. Okay, so now I'm just saying Sx plus. What what do you think the average Sz is? Looking at this. What? What? Zero. Zero. Yeah, it would average out to zero. I mean, you can see you can see this, but you know, as much as it's up, it's down in terms of the z. 
projection into z, so it'd be zero. So there's no uncertainty. Now let's go back here. So again, I'm very, very specific. So this is um, uh, right. Um, okay. So here's here's the system I'm describing, and I'm saying that if the result is an operator, the uncertainty principle, it when the result of the uncertain of the commutator is an operator. It's not that it's zero or not. This is not zero. However, it's actually that's not quite right at the same time. It's really you really got to say it's conditional because you have to know what you're studying, right? So when you plug in what you're studying, it gets more nuanced. So if we were doing an SX, if this you know if we're going to do X Y and then the result of the commutator is Z, if you're going to study the SX plus polarized state. There's no uncertainty principle. You actually know, yeah, you don't have an uncertainty principle. Uh, it, it, that's to say, don't don't forget what this means. If you were to measure x and then y, it would come out the same as y and x. If you ran it through a stern girl like x and then a stern girl like y, the result of that measurement is the same as if you ran it through a stern girl like y and then a stern girl like x. The results are exactly the same, so you have no uncertainty in what the state of the beam was. Right? That, that's what it means to have an uncertainty. So if SX plus goes into this thing, it doesn't matter whether you measure X or Y or Y or X, and that way you can be confident in the result. But now why is that? Well, we weren't doing it mathematically, but if you look at this, what do we expect this is going to be? For the SX plus state. that this is polarized in the x state and then you ask what are what is my lack of knowledge of the sx polarization given that you know it is polarized in the excess state what do you expect this number to be what what is that so give me a number what is that zero so this is zero right now this may probably won't be zero, but it doesn't matter, that's zero. Zero times whatever is zero. Right? Okay, now if I had done this question with SY polarized, what do you, what, what do you think I get? Yeah, so the, instead of SX I wrote SY, I'm going to get zero again, because that's zero. Okay, now I take this, I'm going to measure X and Y of an SZ polarized state, I measure x, y, I measure y, x, do I get the same result? I do not get the same result, because that's not zero. So you see what the uncertainty principle tells us? When the result is an operator, it's say, you basically have more to do here. I'll give you the answer, but you have to, you know, you're not really done with the operation. You're not really done evaluating. So when this happens, then you have to be more specific. Like, it's asking, like, oh, yeah, but now you got to tell me, what, what are you really doing? And then you have to tell it, well, actually, I have this Z polarized beam. And then the uncertainty principle says, well, okay, now you've got a problem. If you measure x, y, you won't get the same as, as, as you measure y to the x. And then, uh, okay, now it happens. Then I said, okay, well, guess what? I'm actually measuring x and y for an x plus state or an x, y state. And then it says, hey, well, hey, that's actually fine. That's actually going to work out okay. There's no uncertainty in that in that situation. So um, anyway, I just realized this for the first time <laughs> about an hour ago, uh, and I just wanted you to know that because I, I never really knew how to interpret what happens when a uncertainty principle spits out an operator as the thing that is not zero. Um, because of my stupidity, I just assumed that it was you know. You know, this isn't zero, so therefore, therefore, you can never know x and y. That that you know, x y measuring x and y and then y x will never be the same thing. 
And the answer is it may or may not be, depending on what you're measuring. If you're measuring a Z polarized, indeed, you will not get the same result depending on which one you measure first. And again, that means, you know, there's no magic to measuring X first and then Y second. It's arbitrary. But the results depend on it, which you arbitrarily measure first. And that means that you really just don't know what the hell is going on. Um, but if you measure uh, you know, x and y on an x polarized beam, and, or yx, you get exactly the same thing. You know, Obviously, you should have confidence in what the result is. 